quickly scanning for contact form URLs so you can use them to get leads and sales. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to explain what contact forms are. I'm going to explain how you can use Scrapebox to automate this process and work through hundreds of thousands or millions or even tens of millions of URLs and contact forms. And at the end of this video, I'm even going to cover how you can use some sample use cases of what you might use contact forms for to generate a profit. So what am I talking about? Well, first of all, this is Scrapebox. And if you don't have Scrapebox, you can jump over here to scrapebox.com and roll down to the bottom and grab Scrapebox before the deal ends. Scrapebox is a suite of tools that comes with a long list of add-ons, some of which we're going to be talking about today in this video. Once you have Scrapebox, the next thing to do is go to scrapeboxtips.com, pop in your info, because I'm going to send you tutorials, guides, checklists, and more all for free. I'm even going to show you how to use Scrapebox to make money if you want to learn that. So what are we talking about here? Well, this is an add on called the link extractor add on, which we're going to talk about in a moment. But let's talk about the concept right quick. So what is a contact form? Well, I have a list of websites here. This is the websites we're going to use. It's only 427. Of course, we could work with hundreds of thousands or millions of URLs. I would recommend to stick around to 500,000 to a million URL chunks. Like Scrapebox can do 100 million URLs, but most machines just can't handle that. So I would stick with reasonable chunks. In the video, we're going to use 427 because that's more than plenty to see the concept. You can load in and work with as many as you want. So what is a contact form? Well, you probably know this, but in case you don't, I'm going to jump over here. This happens to be a website of a charity that I volunteer for. We give out food here in the Detroit area and help people, you know, if they don't have food. So we could go to here. We could click on this contact us button and we could roll down to the bottom. And here's a contact form, right? So I would punch in my name. I would punch in my email address, whatever.com, and then... Then I would put in the message. So if I was going to other businesses trying to raise money for this charity, I'd be like, hey, can you help me with some money, right? We give out food. But whatever, right? You get the point. Obviously, you'd put a better message in here. This video is not about how to craft a great message. That is sales copy, and that's a whole other thing. I have plenty of stuff on that. But um, what you do want to do here is put in a message, a name, an email, whatever and you can automate this process. Now, obviously you could use this to get leads or sales if you were selling products or services. You could use this to raise money for a charity. You could use this just to contact people um, and ask them questions or do surveys. Like really, if you think about it, you're contacting them. So what does that mean? If I hit submit here, let me pull this up. It says, thank you, your message has been sent. Well, where has it been sent? Well, let me show you. So if I pop open Outlook, the message just came through. And you can see the name, the email, and the message that I sent. And this just came as an email to the email address. Now, I will ask you, please don't go to the charity website here because this does actually come to an email address that I manage because I volunteer for the charity and I run the website. Um, and we do give out food to hundreds of family in Detroit every single week. And so it's a valuable cause. Please don't put in this URL in the contact form and, and send all of your offers um, because we use all of the money to give food to the families. Nonetheless, this is what it would look like. And so you can actually essentially get to someone's email box, if you think about that for a second, as 90 something percent, like 99.9% .9 of contact forms are going to go to someone's email box and they're going to see an email from you, but you don't have to send an email. You don't have to do anything. You can just utilize a contact form to reach out to them. Obviously these are businesses or charities or that sort of thing. It's not, you know, just Bob who's sitting at home and happens to have a website and a contact form. So use that appropriately and responsibly. Um, I'm not trying to tell you to send spam. I'm trying to tell you that you can reach other businesses. Okay. Now that we've talked about what a contact form is, how would you do this? The premise here is assuming you have a list of URLs, whether you get this list of URLs by scraping them with a keyword, whether you get this list of URLs by utilizing the yellow pages scraper, which you could do pop in, you know, like, you know, I don't know, you can pick your cities or you could just pick all locations or whatever. And then you can pop in the word car and you can start it. And what's going to happen is I'm not going to do this. I have a video on the yellow pages scraper. You have the website column where you can scrape data from yellow pages directly. 
for businesses, or maybe you have your own list. Maybe it's a niche list. Maybe it's a list that you bought. I don't know. But if you have a list of URLs or you scrape a list of URLs, I have videos on the Yellow Pages Scraper. I have videos on the same channel on how you can scrape if you want to put in your keywords, you know, like car, truck, boat. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. Assuming you have a list of URLs that you've got somehow, somewhere, and the list of URLs I have here is just the domain name, but it would generally work with an internal page too, because the contact form is most generally linked to from every single website. You can see on our charity site here that if I go to every single website, this contact form is here. As I dig down, it's all still right here. So let's load this up. We'll go to add-ons and link extractor add-on. And the link extractor is going to pull internal pages because if we want to send to these contact forms, which we can do using the contact form poster, we need the URL of the contact form. It's not going to go find that for us. That's a unique step. So I'm going to load in from Scrapebox the list of URLs here. And all I'm going to do is go to settings and you can tailor this list. But if you look the website here, see how if I click on contact us, it has the word contact in the URL. So the majority of websites, a heavy majority, 80% plus of internal URLs will have a word contact in them. Now, if you happen to be working in a German market and you're targeting businesses in Germany, that word contact might be in German, right? So there are different languages in the URL bar. So you would use whatever, you know, that is, and all you have to do is really just go to go to Google, search for a couple businesses, and go to their websites and click on the word con, you know, click on the contact us form and see what wor word it is in the URL slug there. So that's pretty straightforward. But if it's anything in English or whatever, the word contact is pretty much going to cover it. You can build your own list. Here's what happens: I'm removing URLs not containing the word contact. Pretty easy. I just have some basic connections set up and I have a whole video on like all of these settings. So I'm not going to go into that because this video is about contact forms, uh, URLs. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to set this to level one because that means that um, you just set it to level one because the contact form is linked to from everything. I'm only worried about internal links, not external links. And I'm going to hit start. And you can see it's going to burn through here. And I only have 30 connections running because this is just a home machine. If I was running a server, you know, you could put this up at 100 connections, 200 connections, and you could stamp out a bunch of instances and scan tons of URLs really quickly. So just while I was chatting there, we have reached the end of our 427 URLs. I have some completed ones, some errors, um, and 261 internal links. So I'm just going to stop it. Let us look at the data folder here, which has the actual internal URLs. And it is June 24th. That is this one. And let me open it up here. And here we can see we have the contact us page, contact, contact.html, contact, contact. You get the point, right? These are all the actual contact pages. And so um, this one has the word contact in it, contact-us.php. You get the point. You get all of the actual contact pages. So now... I could take, and I'm just going to copy these. I don't know why it's opening up so small of a window there, but there they are. I copied them with the keyboard, and I'm going to exit this, and I'm going to go down here to contact forms, and they would go in this box. Again, this video isn't on how to send contact forms. I have a separate video on that, um, if not multiple, on this channel by the time you watch this, but one already. They would go in this bottom box, which it says uh, blogs, but it works for websites. So I'm just going to paste them in here and save them. Of course, um, I need to fill out names and emails and subjects and messages, which is, of course, just this stuff right here. You've got to put in the name, the email and the message and that sort of stuff. But again, that's a separate video. So that's how you find the URLs. Um, I took my 427 URLs and I wound up getting 200 and I think it said 261 actual internal contact pages. That doesn't mean that the rest of them might not have a contact page. It could just be some websites have the contact page. They're like single web pages. You've probably seen them where, you know, the entire web page is literally just one web page and it's, it's way long. And when you click on the menu, it just jumps you to different places. So those contact pages would be on the domains themselves. And all I do there is just load them in. Um, I'm not going to go over this. I will link it up in the description. There is a, another video I have on how to remove the list. So we got 261 URLs. We had 427. We could 
um, well, here, let's just do it. If I wanted to go ahead and save this right quick, let me do this. Okay, this is my list of found ones. This is my source list. I can go to import URLs, import and select URL list to compare on domain level. Got to do, do domain level because there's usually only one contact form per domain. I'm going to select the list that I just made, which is right here. And it's going to remove the domain. So like say this one, this one, all of these websites, the 261 that we found were now removed from my original source list of 427 URLs. So I'm left with 187 that didn't have a contact form on it with the word contact in the URL. There is a small percentage of these that may be a contact form that has a different word in it. So you can click on some of these, open them up in a browser and have a look. There's possible, we did have like 40 errors. So it's possible that a website was just offline and maybe it'll be back online later. So you could rerun the list if you wanted to, especially if you had a big list. Um, also what I do is I just grab all of these select them all, copy them to clipboard. And then I'm going to just paste them in here as well, because if they're single page websites where the contact form is on it, then it'll just post to it and away we go. And so the, the great thing about when you run contact forms, this is so automated and you can just run this and like you could click start. And if you had a massive list, like, you know, 500,000, that's not gonna happen while you're at lunch. But if it's a small list, this would be while I was getting coffee, um, 400, you saw how fast it ran. If it was a huge list, you could start it and leave it overnight or or let it run, you know, throughout the day, whatever. And it's just going to work. So it doesn't really matter if we load these in and just test them. If they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. And when you're done, you can export all of the successful ones. And now you have your list of websites that you were able to submit a contact form to. And then you save that off and then you just keep going and you can build yourself a nice big list. So assuming you have a list of URLs or you get a list of URLs and you know what you want to use them for, you're good to go. You can stop watching. If you want to stick around for a minute, let's talk about how you can monetize this, how you can make a profit with this. And again, I'm not saying be a spammer. Don't do that. Um, don't be a scammer. Don't use this in a bad way. This is a positive tool. So again, for my charity, I could reach out to, I could get a list of local businesses in Detroit, like just get a big list of keywords, right? Or I could go to my yellow pages scraper and get a list of businesses in Detroit area around the food program, reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, we're doing a drive. Can you help us donate some money so that we can, you know, give some more food out to needy people. You could do that. You could come in here and say, Hey, listen, you know, I saw that, um, Google analytics four is coming out cause it is, uh, it's already out, but they're going to mandate that, um, here soon. So you could say, Hey, listen, I saw your website didn't have Google Analytics 4 and you're not going to have your analytics anymore. So can you, um, you know, would you like for me to help you do that? Assuming that you have the service of setting up Google Analytics 4, right? Let's say that you sell SEO. Of course, that's an obvious win. You could go local and, you know, if you are doing something local, like let's say you're a tree company, right? You could just pick up a tree company in Atlanta, Georgia, right? At and to Georgia, right? I think that's it. And you're a tree company. You could message every business. You could use Yellow Pages plugin and um, pick up all of the businesses in Atlanta, Georgia, plus some keywords, car, truck, boat, you know, Atlanta, Georgia. You could get a list of zip codes and then use the merge tool to merge all of those in and scrape for those. And then we could, we could harvest from Google, for example, um, or from Yahoo and Bing and get the local areas. And then you can message them all and say, hey, do you have any trees you need removed or trimmed, right? Because even if they don't want to cut down their tree, tree branches grow and you can't have them too close to the roofs and they got to do that every few years. Maybe you do gutters too if you're a tree company. Um, you know, maybe you do other sort of landscaping, right? So you could just message the business and say, hey, this is like a legitimate business solicitation. It's the same thing essentially, in my opinion, um, you can take it or leave that my opinion, but my opinion is, you know, my opinion. So as mailing them a postcard, right? You could, or giving them a phone call. Hey, are you interested? It's a business. You're a business, they're a business and you're doing business. Are you interested in this? No, we rent from so-and-so and they handle the building. Okay. No worries. Yes. 
Actually, I have a bunch of leaves on my roof and there's some branches touching the roof and I'm afraid that it's going to damage the shingles and that's going to cost more and water damage, of course, can cost more than, you know, paying someone to come and cut the branches. Can you come give me a quote? Awesome. Okay. So, um, and tree businesses are very yes or no, you know, yes, I want to quote. No, I'm not. And we keep moving. Right. So you get the point, whether you're a service industry or, um, you know, you provide physical products, that's a method that you could use to do it. So let's say, I'm trying to think here what a product you have might be. Let's say that you sell an AI uh, product. That's a software, maybe it's a SaaS tool. So software as a service, that could work, um, which is kind of a product. It's kind of a service product, but let's say you have an actual product and you sell it to accountants. You could contact all of the accountants in France. I don't know if, let's say you sell it in France. And you could message them all and say, hey, listen, are you interested in this product? It's shown that when you use this product, um, you know, then you'll be able to make more money and help your clients better, right? So I've sold lots of stuff over the years with contact forms. I even sold like office snacks, like healthy snacks that got shipped on a subscription to businesses because a lot of businesses will provide snacks for the employees. And so you could provide healthier snacks, right? Like you can sell all kinds of stuff, right? I have a guy I've helped and he sells shipping containers with contact forms, right? He helps businesses that need shipping containers. Okay. So the point is, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should sell shipping containers because that's a highly specialized thing and he's no know, knows what he's doing and he's deep into space and has massive connections around the world. And that's not going to be something you get into, right? But you could sell all kinds of stuff. And so this is what you could do. You could message the businesses and literally you're just asking, hey, you can do it in a smart way. But it's like sending a postcard or a phone call. Hey, listen, we have this offering. Can we help you? Can we help you make more money, right? If you can help a business, you know, if you could help a business make an extra $10,000 a month and you're going to charge them $1,500 a month to make an extra $10,000 a month, no business on the planet is going to say no because they're $8,500 in the black with profit. So that is the concept of why you might want to use contact forms. That is how you can scan contact forms. And you can check out the description again for links to the other videos and resources I am talking about. So thank you for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.